Hi, I'm Bob Wormsley, and this is part four of our Hot 4D Ocean tutorial inside of Cinema 4D. And in this tutorial, we're going to be going for this infinite ocean look. Um, now, Hot 4D, when it comes to infinite oceans, it is actually quite limited. Um, it's difficult to use the foam effectively, and it's difficult to use the spray effectively on this scale. If I were you, I wouldn't even bother trying. But you can get good effects if you know how to work around the limitations. So here's an example of where I've used this in production. This is for um, Finding Neverland, uh, which is the uh, Broadway musical. And this is a performance of that during the Tony Awards in 2015. And this is the Tony Awards uh, YouTube page. This is their copyrighted video. So as the scene starts, the curtain raises. Um, and here is Kelsey Grammer, who is playing Captain Hook, in front of this big, vast ocean. And if we just scrub this through a bit, we see that the ocean really envelops the whole stage and it was a kind of a large stylized it's obviously not realistic um, but this was all using hot 4d and some of the techniques that i used to create this i'll show you in our making of our infinite ocean so let's jump into cinema 4d and get cracking so here we are back in Cinema 4D and we'll start this project from scratch for this one. So I've got 250 frames on the timeline. Um, I'm running 25 frames per second. So first of all we need our plane and we need to go to plugins and find our Hot 4D plugin. There it is. Now this is a deformer and it goes as a child of the plane and already we've got this deformation. So what we need to do first of all is animate the deformation because at the moment nothing's happening. So to do that we'll go to the time parameter in Hot 4D and we'll go to frame 0 and put a keyframe. And then we'll go to the last frame 250 and we'll put a value of 50 in there. That worked well for us. Add a keyframe. And we just need to go to the timeline. I've got mine docked up here. And we need to get those keyframes and make them linear. There we go, right. So now we'll have a bit of an animation. Okay, so Hot 4D needs lots of subdivisions to get lots of detail. And at the moment, if I just put my lines on, there are not many subdivisions in this plane. And so it's, it's not looking particularly detailed. So let's put some more subdivisions in. Let's go to say 100 by 100. And then already we can see there's much more going on. All right, so let's just make a few adjustments. Uh, we could increase the choppiness, which pinches the fractal on the peaks. There we go. That's kind of looking how we had it before. Um, increase the resolution slightly. Bring that choppiness down a bit. That's kind of the look that we had. Okay, so that works fine. And we can get a really nice look just with a plane. But here's where the limitations start with hot 4d because as soon as you start trying to make a, a bigger surf a surface of water uh, strange things start to happen and suddenly things start to look incredibly unrealistic so i'll just demonstrate that let's for imagine say we want to fill our entire view area with with an ocean not just a plane we can hit t for scale and we can scale up this plane keep going until let's move the camera away a bit and okay so there we go and what's happened when we've scaled it up is that obviously that the plane has got a lot bigger but the subdivisions has remained the same so effectively we're, we've got less resolution and it looks all blocky and horrible and you can see the, the the polygons are much bigger so what we can do is we can increase those subdivisions back up to make up for that scaling Let's put it onto a thousand, which is the, the maximum. Loads of detail back, um, but our playback is pretty terrible, very jittery, and it's struggling. And if we render, and we've got this very samey pattern, but that's something that we'll sort out later. That isn't actually subdivisions. So what we need to do, really, I mean, we could do this. Um, you could put up with it. You could have loads of subdivisions over a huge surface. And it would work and it would render, but it would be very slow. Um, it would be tedious to work within the viewport. Um, and it would be a waste of processing power, really. So what we need to do is we need to be able to 
um, make this plane much bigger without having to have um, the same detail of subdivisions all over it. So I'm just going to put that back to default. There we go. So we're back to scratch. Let's put those subdivisions back to 200 just so we can see the animation and work with it in the viewport. OK. So what we're going to use to deform this is um, one of the other deformers, the default deformers in Cinema 4D, and we're going to use it on top of the Hot 4D deformer. So just to demonstrate how this works, I'm just going to switch those two off for now. So we're going to use an FFD deformer. Let's bring it in. And you can see that it comes in as this cube, and if we're in... If we go in point mode, we've got all of these selectable points. So I'm just going to bring a cube in to show you how this works. So there's a cube. Give it some subdivisions. Everything needs subdivisions if you want to use deformers. So let's give it 10 by 10 by 10. And I'll just show you those lines. OK. So with this FFD deformer, let's say if I pick this um, point here, this is fantastic. I can just pull it out. Ooh, I've made it make it a child of the cube. And now look, we can deform it using that one point, which is pretty cool. We could take this point and move it up. We could take this point, move it down. And so we can get all of this really cool deformation by moving these points around and changing the look of this cube which is pretty cool. So how are we going to use that with, with um, Hot 4D? Well, let's bring an FFD deformer in, and I'm going to make it a child of the plane, and I'm going to change a couple of things. We don't need it to be this big three-dimensional um, cube. So what we can do is we can reduce the Y value to zero, to flatten it, and we don't need, we need as few points on the Y as possible. Two is the minimum, so I'll take it down to two. OK. I'll turn Hot 4D off for now, and let's just take those lines off. So there's our, here's our FFD here. And let's just make it the same size as the um, plane, four by, 400 by 400. OK, there we go. So what I'm going to do, I want to create a... I want to increase the scale of this plane using this deformer, but I also want to create a circular outline, not this straight line. So this is how I'm going to do it. We'll do this in stages. I'm going to select this point, this point, this point, and this point. Now make sure you haven't got only select visible elements ticked, um, otherwise you, this won't work because there's actually two points on top of each other here. So make sure that this is not ticked. So now I'm going to hit the scale key, T, and I'm going to scale these up. They don't need to be exact, but I'm going to scale it up like something like that. Okay, and you can see that it's already giving us a bit of a curve on the edge of this plane. OK, that's the first deformation we're going to do. Now we've done that, I'm going to add two more points on each side, 5 and 5. OK, that's looking good. And I'm going to select these points, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. Hit T, scale it up. And let's just do one more. So I'm going to go up to 7 now. 7 and 7. And I'm going to take, let's see how we'll smooth this out. I'm going to take this one, this one, this one. Let's see. Um, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. T, scale it down. OK. Cool. That's looking good. So we've kind of created a, an odd circular shape out of our plane. And this is, isn't what we want to do yet. But we're getting there. 
So now what we're going to do, let's just take those lines off, Oops, sorry. I'm going to select all of those points and we're going to make our huge water surface and zoom right out. I want this to be massive. There we go. Hit T. I'm going to scale up all those points. And this is making an absolutely enormous surface. And if we put our lines back on, OK. So this is really stretched out our geometry now. And just to just just so you've got something to gauge it on, look, I'll go into the center, make a new plane. That's what it started off as, that size. And now it's this massive surface. Cool. And I'm gonna make it even bigger. Excellent. So now here's the trick. We made it bigger, but what we're going to do is we're gonna now select all of these points on the inside. I'm sure there must be a quicker way of doing this, but I don't think you can do loop selections and the like with these points, which is why I'm kind of individually selecting them all. OK, so now what we're going to do, we've left the outside points. We're going to scale in the internal points. And now you can see what's happening is that we're getting an incredibly fine, highly detailed section in the middle and as we move out to the outside, the polygons are getting bigger and bigger. So it's kind of giving us a distance fall off for subdivisions, which is amazing. So now what I can do, I'm going to move these towards the bottom edge of our surface. So now again, all of the high resolution subdivisions are here. And it's getting much, much bigger as it moves to the edge. All right. So that's looking pretty good. I think we can make that even smaller. OK. So let's make Hot 4D active. And how many subdivisions? So we've only got 200 subdivisions. So this is a huge space with not many subdivisions. So I'm going to boost that up to 500. And now I've got a really dense amount of subdivisions here. Good. So we're getting there. So if I hit render, we've got this plane that's going off into the distance. But clearly, this is so horribly regular. This isn't going to work. And this is the next principle we need to think about in Hot 4D. When we had these settings for our tiny plane, it was fine. It worked OK. But we were working at a very small scale. So this ocean size in metres just isn't going to do. 500 metres is not enough. We need this to be absolutely vast because we've created this vast area. So let's put this up to, say, let's try 4,000 all right, and we're going to increase our wind speed because we want a huge, huge ocean. All right, and we'll increase our wave height. Let's we're going to put it up stupid at first to 200. All right, how's that looking? And very quickly, we've got something that actually doesn't look not half bad really I mean it's, it's not right yet but it's looking okay now because we have such a huge ocean uh, this number is massive I think we need to increase our resolution and I think we're going to go all the way up so let's just try it on the second to last highest resolution as you see now that brings our viewport much slower but it should look better in the render. Let's go on to full whack. I think, just drop that down while I'm messing around. I think we could probably have a little bit of choppiness in here. Let's bring that back onto full resolution again. The render. 
all right now we're talking now we're starting to get an ocean surface that's looking pretty good i think um excellent and we're doing it with relatively few subdivisions that's the key we've got our detailed area here let's put these lines back on so it's much more detailed here but as it spreads out it's using far fewer subdivisions and so we're still getting decent movement decent feedback which is great so that's the principle of using the FFD deformer. So let's get building this and making this look pretty decent. So we're going to make a new texture. So we'll double click here. And this texture is going to be slightly different from the other couple of tutorials. With this texture, we're not going to use luminance because we're not going to be using any lights or physical skies. So luminance won't work. Our subsurface scattering needs lights and we're not going to use lights. So I'm not even going to bother with it. And I'm not actually going to bother with colour. I'm going to do everything with reflectance. So because there's no lights, I don't need any specular. Get rid of that. I'm going to add a Beckman. And I'm going to keep it all completely standard. But I'm going to um, add a layer Fresnel. And the layer Fresnel is going to be a dialectic Fresnel, and there should be a preset for water. There you are there, water. Okay. And I'm going to leave it just as that. I might use a bump later on, but we'll leave it just as a reflective material for now. Okay. And let's put that on our plane. Now, if I render this, nothing should happen. Because there's nothing to reflect, obviously. So what are we going to reflect? Well, we're going to bring in a sky object and then we're going to put a texture on the sky object. Um, so let's make a new material by double clicking down here. We'll double click again to bring up the settings. And in the color, I'm going to go to texture and I want to load in an image. And I go to load image. Now, um, I'm going to use, I've been working on some um, custom HDR maps um, and this is pretty much so this sunset I've been working on let's bring that one in now this is huge I think this is 10k image so it's massive and it's a true HDR so it can be used for um, GI lighting as well but but we're not we're, we're just using it for for the reflections and also for the background so I'll just leave it as that for now let's drag this onto the sky now we'll hit render all right so straight away this looks like water that looks like sky but the water doesn't reach the horizon so we have a slight a slight problem <laughs> so what are we going to do about that <clears throat> well probably we're going to cheat because this is all about workarounds, this tutorial. Um, Hot 4D isn't the best bit of software to make amazing infinite oceans, as I said earlier on. Um, but we, we can cheat and use tricks to get a pretty decent effect. So probably the easiest thing that we could do, let's just take off Hot 4D so we get some feedback. Select the plane, uh, rotation mode, and let's just rotate it up. Okay, and then we'll go back to move mode and we'll move it up until it's past the horizon line. Let's try render. And put Hot 4D back on, that would help. There we go. So I think, really, these waves are too high. And the ocean's slightly too big. So I'm going to just bring this down to 3,000, I think. And I'm going to bring the wave height down just to say, let's try 120 first. L um, fractionally more, 100. And I'm going to add a bit more choppiness. A bit more choppiness. Let's have a render. All right, that's looking okay. So this map, this sky map, I know part of it has got a nice sunset because that took me ages to make. So I want to use the sunset. So I'm just going to select the material 
and I'm going to just offset it on the horizontal. I'm not looking at my texture. Let's go to Options, View Textures. There. And I'm just going to move this round. There we go. We've got a sunset. Here, render. All right, now we're talking. We're getting these nice reflected hits off this sun. And this is not looking bad. This is looking pretty decent. So what can we do to make some slight improvements on this? Well, one thing, um, I think we could perhaps experiment with a little bit of bump. So I'll select my material. We'll put a bump on. And actually, the bump, the bump won't work yet because we need to do a key thing. So let's do that first. Once we have got the plane deformed in the way in which we want it deformed using this FFD deformer, what we really need to do is make it editable. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to put a camera where that is because I like that look. And I'm just going to, yeah, we'll leave that there for now. So there's a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my FFD deformer into point mode and I'm going to move these back so it is most detailed right in front of the camera. So yeah, so we've got all of our main subdivisions in this area here, that makes sense. Good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take our Hot 4D out, I'm going to select our plane and I'm going to hit right click and I'm going to put current state to object. And what that has done now, if I hide my plane and switch off that FFD, it's made a polygon object in the shape of our deformed plane, which is fantastic. Good. So let's just turn our lines on. Let's just see how many subdivisions we've got here. So what have we got? I think we could even, let's try subdividing this once. Now this is, we're going to subdivide these polygons to make it even more detailed. This is going to mean our viewport will slow down loads, but we've already looked at our animation. We've already um, changed all of our hot 4D settings. All we're doing now is looking at rendering. So if this does slow down hugely at this stage, it's not the end of the world. So I'm going to go to plane. I'm going to go to mesh commands, subdivide, let's hit this little plus icon here, and we just want to subdivide it once, absolutely, so let's press OK. So this is even more dense mesh now, so let's turn that off, we'll make our Hot 4D a child of our new plane, activate, let's do a render, alright, good. So that is looking really nice now. Really nice. So there's a couple of things. Um, I, I want this HDR. Um, HDRs often come in very milky looking, and that's because there's, there's no gamma correction on them to make sure that they've got all of that light information. Uh, but it means it doesn't, it doesn't look... Um, there's not enough contrast in it visually. If you were lighting using this, using GI, this is how you want it. And then you'd have a, an extra photo, which would be much more contrasty that you'd use f f for the beauty pass. But I'm not using GI, so I can add a bit of contrast to this um, without worrying about it. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to double click on the material. I'm going to go to color and I'm going to in the texture, I'm going to add it to a layer. So if I press layer. What it does, it creates a layer here, and if we click on the thumbnail, it opens the layer. And then this works like Photoshop, so it's put our bitmap in here, but now I can put an effect on top, and I'm going to put a brightness contrast gamma. And I'm just going to add some contrast. Let's have a look at the render. All right. That's looking much nicer already. So I'm just going to go.
go in again, add a little less contrast and a bit of a gamma adjustment. All right, now we're talking. Excellent. That's looking really nice. Good. So I think we have enough detail here. Now that we've subdivided that even further, I don't think we need to add any bump. I think this is going to work as it is. So I don't need to mess around with a stick text a a tag or anything like that. This is just going to work fine as is. But you can see we've got some really bad aliasing where these um, reflections are, especially the brightest reflections. And this is going to cause really bad flicker. So what you're going to have to do here is you're going to have to really ramp up your anti-aliasing settings. Um, some people think at this stage you go to the material and you go to your reflectance and at the bottom you go to your layer sampling and you need to ramp up your sampling subdivisions. But that is going to do nothing for us in this instance because we're not using any blurriness in our reflections anyway. And so that is just going to be, it's not going to do anything at all. We just need to ramp up our anti-aliasing. And I think we're going to have to, to, to set it quite high, which I'm afraid is going to cost us in the render. But I think, let's just go with, we'll try best. I, I've got a feeling we're going to have to go up higher than this. But let's just have a quick look. So it's already looking cleaner, not as speckly. But again, it's it's not going to be enough. So we're going to have to go with... I'm, I'm going to push it four, four by four, eight to eight. So it's, this is going to take way longer. So yeah, sorry, that's slowed down hugely, but it's going to be so much cleaner when we um, when we get this, especially when we're anim animating frames. There's going to be much less flicker. Good. So that's looking that's looking pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, happy with that. Right, so let's do a render um, and then we can move this into After Effects. So what I'm going to do with a the render, that, uh, there's, I'm going to use a, a few tricks in After Effects um, in the comp to make this look better. And um, to, to do those tricks, I know I'm going to need a couple of different passes uh, rendered out. So we're going to have to use multi-pass for this. So what do we need? Well, we need to be able to manipulate just the C without this background sky. So I know I'm going to have to render this with an alpha channel. And I also, I want to mess around with perhaps faking some depth of field. And also perhaps trying a bit of mist in the background. And for that, I'm going to need a depth map. Um, so let me show you how to, how to spit out both of those. Oh, actually, do you know what? Let's do some camera animation as well. Because one thing that makes Cs feel more realistic is if the render, the camera, is bobbing up and down a little bit as well with the seats. Amazing how much that tricks the eye into feeling that it's real and it's been shot from a boat, I suppose. So the way we're going to do that is, a, is a, we're, we're going to cheat. This is a really easy way of, of getting some really nice natural movement in this camera. What we're going to do is go to the camera menu and we're going to pick a motion camera, which brings in this motion camera. And what we're going to say to this motion camera is click on the motion camera tag and we want to say that we want to link it as already, we want to link it to this camera. And it's already linked to this camera and we're going to inherit the camera parameters, override the rig dimensions. So let's just have a look at some of these settings. What have we got? So now let's bring a bit of camera rotation and a bit of camera position. And if we uh, let me just let me just um, hide the hot 4D. And if we press play, now we're getting this bit of let me just hide our original camera. So now we're getting this bit of bobbing. 
and the more we put up the more it'll move and the more it'll rotate and this is just gonna give us a bit of a sense of being on that water so as you can see there's all kinds of um, settings that I haven't used here I've just used camera rotation camera position and what we've done is we have taken this camera is the link which was our original scene camera so it's taken the same position as that cool so now if I reactivate my hot 4d it just means we're going to get a bit of nice natural movement um, uh, when we when we render this out let's just do another quick render all right so I'm happy with that so we need to um, do a couple of things we're going to set up this these render passes now so let's go to our render settings and we're going to select multi-pass and in multi-pass we want to do a depth pass so to do that we need to highlight and tick on multi-pass then we need to come down to our multi-pass menu here and we need to pick depth which is spitting out a depth map but this isn't going to work just yet there's another stage uh, that we have to do so let's go back to our view and I'm gonna come out of this camera <clears throat> so what I want to do is the depth pass is going to be a black and white image and what I want it to be I want it to be um, I can never remember which way around it is I think it will start as black and as it comes down the Z direction to the end of the ocean it gradually becomes white I think it's that way around so the way we we set that up um, is we need to go to our motion camera and we need to go to details and we're going to um, select depth of field map rear blur oh actually I have to do it yes I'm trying to do it in my motion camera and it won't let me do that because I set the motion camera to override the rig dimensions so I need to do it inside this one and it should duplicate it into the motion camera as well so in our original camera we'll go to details hit that yeah here we go and this is the rear so this is where we want it to be finished so I need to move this point out right at the end of the ocean yeah it's kind of about there good and then the regular focal distance of the camera I want to bring it right down to the front and then I'll just need to readjust that because I did it the wrong way around there we go okay excellent so let's just do a quick test render so now that we have got that distance information set into the camera and we have selected depth pass in our multi pass I'll just uncheck save let's just render current frame okay and we'll render to picture viewer and there's our beauty pass with our sky and our ocean but if we go to layer we now have background and depth so if we click single pass here and there's our depth pass so black and it's gradually going from black to white right into the distance so that's exactly what we want and this is going to give us lots of compositing um, maneuverability in After Effects fantastic right so let's just set up this scene now so I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room now I want my render to be um, quite widescreen um, so I'm going to go to render settings and in the output I'm going to pick um, this Panavision um, preset which is really wide so if I go back to my viewport um, oh, you can't really see that can you let me just go to my project settings um, where do I get them from mode view settings view 
border opacity. There we go. Right, so this is this is what's going to be in my render. So at the moment, I'm thinking it's slightly too little sky at the moment. It's such a nice sky, it seems a shame it's not particularly well framed. So all I'm going to do is take this camera, so we just need to rotate slightly I think. So I'll hit R for rotation, let's have a look, yeah that's looking better. A bit more sky, yeah that's much better, and that's going to give us that which is going to do. Great, okay. So let's go to our render settings. What do we need to do? So we have our depth pass. We're going to go to output, and I want this to be, so we've got our um, film aspect ratio, our Panavision, but I want this to be widescreen eventually, so the width is going to want to be um, 1920. Oh, actually, let's undo that lock ratio and that's going to be try that again 1920 there we go that's going to do and in save we want to save it obviously we want an alpha channel we don't want a multi-layered file so let's look after our beauty pass first so we're going to save this let's find a save area so tutorials ocean tutorials ocean tutorial for test um, let's do render output so we're going to stick it in render output I'm going to call it what shall I call it ocean tut 4 I'm just going to copy that actually no that's fine ocean tut 4 and then save and I want to I, I always like to use open EXRs as a format so I'll click that but they are huge and by default the 32 bit so what we're going to do is we'll go into options and we're actually going to use a, com a more compressed format which will just be 16 bit so this one's a good one lossy 16 bit um, with the blocks of 16 scan lines that's going to work well and, and be relatively manageable we've got alpha channel selected which is perfect so now in our multi-pass image, I'm just going to copy that route and I'm going to paste that into the multi-pass. And because I've got layer name as suffix, it's not going to record over this. It's going to have this name and then it'll have depth at the end. That's what the layer name as suffix will do. So again, I'm going to pick open EXR and I'm going to pick the compressed one that's 16 bit looking good looking good what was my anti-aliasing 48 let's put that onto animation so this is going to be a long render I'm afraid and we want all frames and let's hit render let's see how long it's going to be per frame it's going to be horrendous I think <laughs> that's what anti-aliasing does for you so what are we on yeah it's going to be about what 25 seconds of frame thirty one seconds Oof. it's going to be a long night Right, so I'll leave that going, and once it's finished, we'll jump into After Effects, and we'll get cracking with this comp. So here we are in After Effects, so let's bring in our renders, and there's, there's two different files we need to bring in, so I'm just going to double click here, and I'm looking for my Ocean Tup 4, Render Output, and there should be two different sequences in here. There should be the Beauty Pass 
and that depth pass that we uh, that we rendered out. So here's the beauty pass, Ocean Tut 4. So let's bring that one in. And then further down, there should be a depth pass. Ocean Tut 4 depth. Great. And let's bring that one in. There we go. So let's just get this project the right bit depth. So these are 16-bit um, open EXR sequences. So let's click on here. And we're going to... Let me just bring that down so you can see everything. So we're going to bring the bits per channel to 16. Uh, we're going to hit the S. This is just slightly off. Hang on, let me bring that down so you can see it all. For the working space, we're going to hit SRGB to use the same one that Cinema uses. And we're going to linearize the working space because we were working with a, a linear workflow in Cinema. So everything should look the same now if we click OK with those settings. Great. So I'm going to put the depth map into a new comp. And here it is. So here's the depth map. And it's just the animation. And it gradually goes from black to white. Um, now, at the moment, what I really want is almost complete black at the front of the depth map and then going off to white. So at the moment, we've only got a gray here, which is not going to work as well for us for what I want to use this for. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to alter that. Um, and let's have a look. We'll go effect. And let's try a color correction and we'll go with levels. So we'll bring up our levels correction here. So what I want to do is let's just bring up the black point until we're getting black at the start of our map. Okay, looking good. And I'm just going to bring the mids up a bit. Okay, that's looking better. Because what we really want is complete white at the end of the wave and... Uh, complete black at the start. Okay, that'll do for our depth map. Excellent. So, we'll just bring this back across a bit. Right, so what else have we got? Uh, so we've got our depth map in here. We're not going to be rendering this, but we're going to be using this information. So here is our beauty pass, which is this one. And you can see in the preview here, that this is that the ocean has come in with an alpha channel and here's the alpha information here where the sky would be so let's just bring that into our comp i'm going to switch off the depth map press the transparency button to see where we have transparency and there it is so as as default you bring this in and after effects recognizes the alpha channel um uh, that we rendered with the ocean and as a result of that, it's quite useful because we can just manipulate the ocean, but we can't see the sky. And, and obviously, that's an in integral part of our render. So the, the way we'll get a sky is really simple. Um, let's just turn that transparency off. So all we need to do is we need to make a duplicate of this um, sequence. I'm not going to duplicate the one in the comp because that'll just make an, an exact identical replica. I want to duplicate the one in the program window. So I'm going to press Control and D, or Command D on a Mac, and it's made two versions. And on the second one, what I want to say is ignore this alpha channel so we can see the sky. So if I right click on it, go to Interpret Footage, Main, and I'm just going to ignore the alpha channel. And immediately you see it, uh, the sky pops back in. Great. So now we've got two versions of the ocean, should we need it? We have one with the sky, and we have one where we can just make changes to the ocean um, itself. So that's pretty useful. Good. And I'm just going to remove that one. So I think, even though we have the option, I think we can get away with probably just using one layer. And we're just going to use this, this ocean layer with the sky. So let's bring that into my comp. And there we go, and it's looking really nice. We've got a nice camera animation, we've got the waves moving away from the camera. It looks pretty infinite. We can't really see much repetition of ocean pattern, so it's it's looking random enough. We've got nice detail here, which is making it look large. Um, 
and we haven't got wasted detail in the background because we stretched out those subdivisions so there's not actually that many polygons in the distance looking good so what are we going to do well one thing to create something that looks infinite is that we need a slight bit of blur we need some depth of field um, essentially now we don't want a really shallow depth of field we don't want everything really blurry in the background because that'll have a miniaturization effect but if we just have a little bit of blur the further we get into the distance it's going to trick the eye and make you feel like this is a huge infinite scene and that is the main reason why we brought in this depth map because that's we're going to use this information to tell after effects when to bring this blur in so what we need to do is a, a apply an effect to do that so we're going to go to effect blur and sharpen and we're going to use the camera lens blur which is a free um, plugin a free effect in after effects and you get pretty decent results so as as it comes in as default it applies this camera lens blur to the whole image and if I just increase the blur radius everything just blurs out which isn't ideal I'm just gonna change the iris and give it more sides let's give it an octagon okay so this obviously is not what we want it's completely blurred out so all we have to do is tell the camera lens blur to use this depth map um, and where it is white be fully blurred and where it is black have no blur and graduate that blur in so what we do on the camera lens blur settings is on the blur map layer we select the ocean took for depth and uh, we can don't need to see that so now you can see it's only blurred it where it is white on the image and as it comes to black the blur disappears so there's too much at the moment this isn't right just yet but you can see that the effect is working now if you see at the edge of our frame we've got these weird little artifacts this little halo which obviously isn't what we want and that's because it's it's reached the end of the frame and it's still trying to blur out those bits and it hasn't got the information to do it because there's nothing here so the way we get around that is we just repeat the edge pixels and here it is edge behavior repeat edge pixels and when I click this that all disappears great now another great trick that we can do with this um, with this map is that now we've got it loaded up and this is the in focus part and this is the defocus part we can alter the focal distance with this slider so if I just bring this focal distance and change it a bit you'll see that the, the front is starting to blur it's in focus in the middle of the ocean and then it's blurring out again as we get to the end so I'll move that up and it'll blur the front out even more and now we've got this stripe of um, in focus ocean and then it's blurred out near the end now this with the amount of blur that we have got selected 27 which is far too much you see how suddenly we get this miniaturization look it suddenly looks like a toy um, lake uh, which could be really effective if we had you know a render of a, a low poly toy boat for example it would look fantastic but it's not going to work for us for our big infinite ocean we want it to look massive not tiny uh, but it gives you a huge amount of control just with the use of our depth map which we kind of got for free so let's reduce this blur radius down because we don't need near as much I mean I'm gonna say we need about probably let's just try four for now and I'm gonna bring that focal distance near to the very front let's try with seven it's not quite enough all right so now we have a very slight amount of blur down here hardly noticeable We've got this lovely in depth, uh, in, in focus piece here, the main part of the ocean, and then it's gradually defocusing as we get to that, as, as it goes off into infinity. And that, I think, is looking pretty decent. Very nice. 
All right, so I'm not going to over egg this, but you can use this depth map. I mean, play around with it and you can use this depth mat as a, a track mat if you wanted to put try putting in kind of a fog layer onto your C, that would perhaps work. Um, you could use it to um, put in some, if you had some um, stock uh, kind of smoky, misty video, you could use this to only have that coming in in the background or having it coming in in the middle um, or having different layers with different settings to make that fog feel like it was working in 3D space. This information can be used for all types of different things, but I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial. So the final thing, um, I think we could do perhaps do just a little bit of really bog standard color correction just to make this pop a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is select my ocean layer and I'm going to do a new effect. I'm going to go color correction and I'm just going to let's just do, let's just put a really simple contrast curve in and the contrast curve I want above my camera lens blur. So this is the RGB um, channel, and I'm just let's just pull those blacks down a bit, increase the highlights, okay. So just gives it a bit more depth, and it makes these it makes these orange glints from the sun a bit more prominent, which looks really nice. And um, I mean, that just looks nice as it is. I think in my final render, I um, let's well, let's do it. Look, we've got a sunset. So let's go full cheese and um, let's do a let's do a vignette. So we're going to do the most basic of basic vignettes. We'll go to layer new solid. We'll make it black. Let's call it Vig vignette. OK. And if you want to make um, an elliptical mask, to cover this entire layer, all you have to do is select the ellipse tool and then let go and then just double click on here and it automatically makes an elliptical mask. So we need to go into the mask settings and we're going to change it from add to subtract. We're going to feather it out. There we go. And that'll probably do. I mean, we could perhaps bring press T to bring up the opacity and just bring that down just slightly, just so we've got this slight suggestion of a vignette. You don't really want a vignette over the sun because the sun's kind of the hero of the piece, really. Um, all right, looking good. So I think that'll do us for this. As I say, you can spend far longer. You can play around with that depth map using it to composite all kinds of things into this scene. Uh, but I'm going to leave that as it is. So what I'll do is I'll render this out um, and then I'll show you the result. Um, and you can see how it looks. And here's the final render, and I think it's looking pretty nice. We've got some lovely, slow, kind of languid ocean animation there, which gives a sense of scale. We've got that nice bit of fake uh, depth of field um, going back into the distance, which um, kind of cheats the infinite look. And we've got these beautiful sunlight glints and hits off the ocean. So that's looking good. So Hot 4D for Cinema 4D, free plugin. It's absolutely fantastic. It has major limitations. It's not for you if you need big rolling, crashing waves with spray and water and all kinds of stuff. But if you know the limitations, you can work around them and get good results like this. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you could subscribe to me, that would help me out a lot. If you could like the video also, and please feel free to comment. Loads more Cinema 4D tutorials to come. So until next time, see ya.